Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Coach Miriam here. Happy Monday. I pray that you're having a blessed day. Um, and I just want to drop some wisdom, some nuggets for you about a very important topic, which is mental health. I always like to say, as long as you got a head on your shoulders, you have mental health and none of us are beyond needing help. So I hope this broadcast creates some awareness for you today. Share it with somebody, tag somebody in the chat, okay? Even as you watch the replay, no matter what you're doing, I just want, you know, just a few minutes of your attention. Nobody is beyond needing help, therapists included, coaches included, pastors, leaders. Um, many of you are leaders in your household, at work, in your families, wherever you are, uh, we're all in need of help. So I titled this, um, it could be worse, right? But it can also be better because many times we just accept uh, what we believe is handed to us. And as a result of just accepting, I'm not talking about practicing contentment because that's also important, but many times when we accept circumstances um, that we can actually control or change, um, if we don't take action, it's going to lead to agitation. If I accept something that is actually not good for me or that is toxic, agitation is inevitable. And one major theme, y'all, as a therapist, I've been doing this work for over 10 years, studying human behavior, but I've, um, I've, I took a deeper dive into it since the pandemic. I've had a private practice for about three years. Hi, Abe. How you doing? Thank you for joining. And uh, so there are many things that I've noticed, y'all. Like, you know, I've gotten help because I've needed it. I've been through trauma, okay? And pain that is not transformed is transmitted. And one general um, quote or theme that I've noticed amongst um, some of my clients and people in, in studying this work is, I delayed, you know, it, it, speaking for the client, I delayed asking for help because I had been downplaying my needs. I thought because it wasn't physical abuse or sexual trauma that it wasn't enough for me to get help. I thought because it wasn't this significant thing, you know, I had a decent childhood, I think, you know, um, because it wasn't in one of those categories I delayed asking for help or I didn't ask for help until things get worse. And many of the clients that, you know, end up coming to me uh, are ones that have been thinking, OK, maybe I need to get some help or they've tried self-help, uh, self-direction, YouTube videos, um, you know, Googling things, you know, remedies, uh, maybe some activities, some activities that we shouldn't explore, um, but create some dependence around. And then those things don't work until, and, and so many people end up waiting until it's really bad uh, before asking for help. But even if you wait until, even as long as you ask for help, that's, that is good. That is my encouragement to you today is to ask for help and to um, just disrupt being desensitized or being deceived that, you know, I don't know, just being deceived that uh, help is not for you or that you have to do it all by yourself, all right? So my response to that is, yeah, it could be worse. It could be worse, but it can also be better. It could be worse, but it can also be better. I've worked with like hundreds of people now who allow their emotional and their mental health to suffer until they begin to like just really feel depressed and even generally anxious. Some even begin to abuse substances like alcohol or other drugs. Um, and just like I was pointing to waiting until things get worse before they ask for help, many times that may look like beginning to question their existence. Like, like why am I alive? Why am I still here? Some of them actually begin to experience suicide, suicidal thoughts. Y'all, that is not your portion. It should not get that far. And, and many people have also committed suicide. So not addressing your mental and emotional pain is similar to not addressing a physical pain. 
or wounds, like an open wound. Even a physical wound, y'all, um, that is not addressed can end up resulting in multiple issues such as an infection and it gets worse over time. So that's what happens when we don't address emotional pain and traumas. And emotional pain that is not transformed is transmitted. Emotional pain that is not transformed is transmitted. So then we become hurt people who hurt people or hurt people who just remain hurt. And then we end up creating hindrances in our own emotional growth and our self-esteem. So why do people wait so long? So I was touching on this in the beginning, but some of this can be um, due to a stigma associated with getting therapy. Like, I don't want people to think I'm crazy, that type of thing. It could be pride. Some of us have even been um, groomed in our households, depending on the culture, to like keep certain things secret. Right? So then we as adults begin to maintain a certain self image because we don't want people to know what's really going on behind closed doors. So the results I have seen about that is running in the same circles, the same cycles of poverty, low quality and toxic relationships, sadness, anger, isolation. But many people are really just trying to figure it out themselves, but they just have challenges making changes. And the definition of doing the same thing and expecting a different result is what? It is insanity. The definition of doing the same thing and expecting a different result is insanity. And I don't, you know, I never say that in a harsh way or tone, but the sad irony of not getting help because one does not want to be seen as crazy can then lead one insane. That's a sad irony of it. So it's like this is due to denying yourself resources and support and not knowing how to get out of the cycle that you're in. Or others may not reach out for support or they may wait a long time because of um, other messages being told when they were growing up, like, you know, just get over it. So they, they are used to experiencing uh, invalidation or having their feelings dismissed like, oh, you're just too sensitive. Oh, you just talk too much or just be quiet. Be seen, not heard. Right. So then we end up keeping our feelings to ourselves and we don't know how to express them. And it's not about uh, being. Um, expressing your feelings. It's not the same as being overly emotional. I think many times we don't learn how to develop healthy communication skills or we experience emotional neglect as children. So then we become adults that um, are demanding. We can actually um, be demanding for someone to meet our emotional needs as a result of being emotionally starved in childhood, that invalidation or um, dismissiveness. I've even seen this too in, in children who grow up in families where the adults are constantly bickering and arguing and the adults are so focused on their problems that they forget about the little person around them, the little people around them. I talk about that a lot too, all right? Or sometimes you may hear growing up, yeah, just pray about it, just pray about it. And trust me, prayer has its place. It is important. Seek first the kingdom of God, but also just uh, remember that God made counselors for a reason. There's a scripture that says, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And in Proverbs, he talks about by wisdom, by knowledge, by understanding. And also many of us actually need help being led out of mental bondage. Even when you think about the children of Israel, God delivered them after years and years of slavery. But Egypt was still in their mindsets in the wilderness. And that's why they began to revert. I mean, some of them actually wanted to go back to what was familiar. So even toxic, something uh, that is toxic, uh, we can be um, more committed to that toxic thing simply because it's familiar, even though we don't like it. So some of them wanted to go back just because the journey moving forward was uncertain and it was uncomfortable. So many times we actually need to be led so that we can make progress and we need help getting Egypt 
out of our mind so that it's not keeping you from your promised land or, or from uh, that perspective relationship, um, a relationship that could truly benefit you if you were to heal or that business that's meant for you. But if I'm worried about failure, if I'm worried about what other people say or what was told to me in my childhood, I'm going to keep myself. I'm going to be a hindrance to myself because I've not allowed my hurt to be healed. If I don't allow my hurt to be healed, it becomes a hindrance for me. It becomes a, a barrier for me. And I believe that at the core of people's desire is actually to be free. It is to be happy. Who wants to be miserable? But then many times when people are, are miserable for a long period of time, misery also begins to, to, to want company. Misery loves company. So then it's like it could be the same circuitous conversations with, you know, individuals who are also miserable, who are who have become used to being sad or who have become used to being insecure. And it's like, ooh, this keeps happening. Right. This keeps happening. Ooh, girl. Mm -hmm, yeah, bro. Mm, this marriage. Mm. Ooh, my kids. Ooh, this. Ooh, that. You know, ooh, the money is funny. You know, just different things like that versus progress. That's why um, it is wisdom. It's scriptural. But I've, I've also heard um, many influencers who have become experts in their fields talk about surrounding yourself with people who are be where you want to go. If you connect with millionaires, look, if you connect with five millionaires, you're going to be the sixth one simply because who you connect with influences you. That's why it's also important not to just like when you feel some type of way to go and get advice from someone who is where you are or even a few steps behind where you are, because it's going to pull you back. Woo, y'all. Um, I, I just went on a little tangent right there. But, you know, I believe that many people are being plagued. I see this with so many clients. They're plagued with tormenting thoughts, with beliefs about not being good enough. Like I know I've experienced that as well. Many have experienced emotional hurt and pain. And as a result of staying there, it is going to keep you from living an abundant life in the rich way that you're meant to experience it. And you don't have to experience this, you know, overt uh, sexual trauma or physical abuse in order to um, have your pain be validated. Emotional, um, emotional abuse is real. Whether the message is sent directly or even indirectly, little messages about not being good enough accumulate over time, right? And it could it could be hurtful. It could be painful. And I've seen many people internalize those messages. Right. There is, I believe, a, a desire. I believe people have a desire to want to to be healed, to be free, to have your needs met, to pursue your path, financial prosperity, good health and wellness healthy relationships. There's truly a desire that I've seen that people want, they, they, people want wholeness. Like again, who wants to just remain where they are miserable and sadness. So I just want to disrupt the myth that you just have to accept what was handed to you in childhood. That is leading you to believe that, okay, well, it is what it is to have that men, kind of mentality, or this is just the way it is. This is just my reality. No, you do not have to accept this as your reality, nor do you have to blame people for it. Because then when you blame I, what also what I've seen is uh, individuals who are fault finders or blamers or focus on other people. Or even if you were to center your peace of mind on what somebody else is doing. Um, is a disempowered person and a disempowered person is a dangerous person. It is dangerous. So you don't have to, you know, acquiesce or just accept that this is just my reality. 
where there may be like just complaining and compartmentalizing. And you see that time again, complaining and then compartmentalizing. I truly encourage you, y'all, to shift from acceptance into exploration and begin to explore who you are outside of the pain filled version of yourself. Explore who you are outside of the negative beliefs that you have about yourself or even general negative beliefs that you've developed about people as a result of the pain that you've experienced in the past. Many of us are keeping ourselves from actual healthy relationships or developing them as a result of remaining hurt, which creates insecurities, which creates projecting. I have a chapter, y'all, in this book that is coming out uh, called The Prisoner of Projection, where not only are you mentally uh, bound, but, but, you, but there's also this projecting of beliefs onto people as well. And those beliefs may not be true. Many times they're not true. But it is your right to be free and healed so that you can live your blessed life, your blessed life, not a burden life, but your blessed life. But what we don't acknowledge, we can't change. So it begins with acknowledging that you are in pain and taking action so that the pain can be healed. Pain that is healed leads into stepping into your purpose. When you're intentional about healing, healing your pain, addressing that wound, you step into purpose. So how do we get started, Miriam? How do we get started? Well, a part of my announcement that I hinted at earlier is I am going to be announcing which book cover um, I ended up choosing. So I just really want to thank you all for voting. I'm so excited to uh, let you know which one I chose today. So I'm going to do that in a few hours. Um, and my book is going to be launched soon. So stay tuned. Um, it's called Pureography. Okay. You can see where I got that from. So Pureography, it's about mind purification, releasing the mental weight so that you can experience mental freedom. So it's really going to help you uh, understand your barriers and learn how to step out of them. It's a transformational book. And some of the chapters include rejection, burdens, anger, like issues that my clients, no matter their demographics, I mean, I, I black, white, male, female, um, you know, Indian, Hispanic, you know, like I work with so many people and, um, it's, it's just interesting how uh, we truly do share, you know, commonalities in human behavior as a result of being hurt. A couple other um, chapters include pride, the prisoner projection, which I talked about earlier. Unforgiveness, whoo, unforgiveness and, of, and offense. Shame and regret, perfectionism and performance. Void. Lust, come on, ungodly soul ties, sadness. Y'all, sadness, that one right there. Whew. Sadness that stays too long results in depression. You know, so it's it's so important because when you begin to uh, change your beliefs, you literally change your world. And when you begin to realize how much power you actually do have you become unstoppable. But many times we don't realize that because our minds are so full of um, defeat and failure and negative beliefs that we've already created all the worst case scenarios of concerning our life. So then how can you thrive? I have a chapter on intrusive thoughts, being easily distracted, come on somebody. The attention span of a gnat, come on, <laughs> procrastination, fear. So not only will you become aware, but it leads to action. And action is the antidote to despair. Uh, the book is not just information because who needs just more information? I think many people, again, are, um, you know, do want to help themselves and have consumed some literature, even if it was a TikTok 
Uh, however, you, the information is transformational, but there are transformational exercises, affirmations that have uh, helped me and hundreds of clients. I, I mean, time and time again, I'm going to share some, uh, some more client testimonials with you all. But to hear someone say, and this is not me boasting, um, you know, I've been struggling with this for years and I, like, I, I, I just I experienced a, a powerful shift after one session. After one session, so I'm including I'm including uh, some of my secrets, you know, visualization exercises to help you see yourself in a new way. Affirmations. So that you can begin speaking. So that you can be begin speaking your change into existence, the change that you want to see. All right. So y'all stay tuned for that. Again, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for voting. I cannot wait to let you know which book cover I actually chose. Make sure you tag somebody in this broadcast. Um, and y'all have a blessed day. And in the words of Tabitha Brown, if you can't enjoy your day, make sure you do not mess up somebody else's. Okay. All right, y'all.